led a lot of you to reminisce about your visits to your parents' workplace. Be it a corporate office, a factory, a government office, or even a movie set. For most of us, bring your child to work is a yearly event where the kids go to their parents' workplace and have an exciting day, bringing back home lots of goodies and, of course, happy memories. But let me tell you that this bring your child to work is far different than that. Here, the people in context are the ones who support us by working for us. And their workplace is none other than our own homes and offices. There are no corporate managers or doctors or movie stars. In fact, they don't even fit into the standard white collar jobs as is defined by our society. So I'm talking about all those who play a vital role in helping us maintain a balance in our day-to-day -day lives. Any guesses? Of course, who else can they be? They are our domestic helps, cooks, drivers, car cleaners, and so many more. But the question that flickered through my mind was, can their workplace be a platform for the growth and development of their little ones? Well, why not? So today, I, Kiara Pradhan, would like to share with you all my story that has led me to initiate something on a very small scale. But I'm sure that if perceived and accepted by many, it can touch a lot of lives. It all started in our living room a few months back. I had given some of my books and some stationery to our domestic help, Kamini Tai, for her seven-year-old daughter, Shreya. On one weekend, Shreya came along with her mother to thank me for the goodies. I noticed that while waiting for her mother to finish off her work, Shreya kept looking at what I was doing. To end her curiosity, my mom asked her to come and sit next to me. I smiled at her and she returned it coyly. Looking at how intently she kept staring at my books, I asked her if she would like to do something as well. Her face lit up and she nodded vigorously. Amused by her reaction, I gave her a paper, pencil and some crayons, thinking she might be interested in coloring. But to my surprise, she said, Tai, mala tuja sar sir, which meant, Didi, I want to write like you. I then started asking her about her school, her grades, teachers, sub, uh, teachers, subjects, friends. At the end, I realized that her day at school is more or less like a normal school day for me too. But her curriculum was not as intense as ours and neither did she have access to resources to learn more. I casually asked her if she would like me to teach her sometime. And once again, her eyes lit up with the same vigorous head shake. I took it as a big yes. After some more chit chatting, I got to know that she has friends and cousins in her neighborhood who would also be happy to join her. I then got an idea that I could consider discussing and working on with my parents and friends. That day, during my usual meet and play with my society friends, I asked them if they would like to spare a few hours of their weekend doing something unique and different than their usual chores. They were all excited, curious, but fortunately, all of them gave a nod to my idea. That week, we all asked our respective domestic helps, cooks, and even our housekeeping staff who had kids in the age bracket of six to 10 years to bring their kids to work the following Saturday. We decided to meet in the morning so that the kids could accompany their parents when they came for their daily jobs. We thought it was best to approach our managing committee as a group under the guidance of our parents, as trend does lie in numbers, right? So we requested them to allow us to use the clubhouse for two hours that day and hopefully for all the following Saturdays. The day dawned. Me and my gang of, gang of girls were all set and waiting for our new students to join us at the clubhouse. The time decided was 10 a.m. No one was there yet. Come 10, 10, still no one. Finally, at 10, 12, we see two tiny heads peeping through the glass door. 
This time, our faces lit up. We got them comfortable and a few more came in. And by 10.30, we had eight students with us. Some bought books and some came empty-handed. But we were prepared with books, pencils, erasers, and crayons for them. The first 30 minutes went in just interacting and getting acquainted. Our, our conversations went from school to favorite actors, movies, games, sports, teachers, and best friends to what they would like to do when they grow up. Eventually, we moved on to their academics and discussed what they had studied individually. To our surprise, they were very attentive in their classrooms and had answers to most of our questions. The session ended with content faces, theirs as well as ours. Then we were asked the most significant question. Tai, ami parat kariyo? Which meant, Didi, when do we come back? That moment, we all knew that this initiative is a success. Now, we had to think of more innovative ideas, plans, and initiate and deliver those. We decided to divide subjects amongst us and group the students grade-wise. We planned fun activities for them and conducted storytelling sessions. We also taught them how to use a calculator. Our medium of communication was um, Hindi and Marathi mainly, but some kids were keen on practicing English, especially the elder ones. So we went with the flow. By now, we had all the domestic helps and cooks telling our respective parents how happy they are and their child is to come here every Saturday. Some even wanted to come on Sundays. The next Saturday, we had 14 kids with us. That was 80% hike. As the days passed, we knew we had to gear up for better exposure. We wanted to introduce computer literacy. Once again, our managing committee supported us by letting us use the big projector screen so that the kids could have some practical training with the laptop. And this was received very well by the kids too. These kids taught us that it's not the size or uh, size of your pencil or brand of your pen, not the shape and color of your eraser, not the cover of your book that matters. What matters is the zest to learn and show gratitude for everything that life has offered. And even if 2% of housing societies decide to follow this, we can create confident kids and proud and content parents who otherwise in the long run end up losing hope for their kids due to their social and economic background. This has not just been about teaching them. It has been a learning journey both ways. In fact, more for us, the privileged lot in comparison as it, en as it enriched us beyond academics. This changed our perspective completely. It's not the place, the school, the type of board, the peer group, or the teachers. Education is for anyone who wishes to learn, period. I, so I hope that this small initiative of mine will be appreciated by all of you and will inspire you to follow suit. I would like to end with a quote by Ellen Nordikran. She said, education is one thing that no one can take away from you. So on that note, the Bring Your Child to Work initiative has a lot of potential to offer. It just depends on the willingness of us as a society. Thank you.